<laughs> Technical issues are always a little, oh no, now he's turning down the lights. We need him to turn the sound down. Yeah, not the lights. Yeah, I don't, the lights are fine. Yeah, the lights are up. It's good. I just want, is it too loud? For, all right. Because <laughs> I can't see a thing. <laughs> you know, it's like watercolor. If it isn't fun, it's not worth doing, right? Okay. Ah, bravo. Bravo, much better. I see you all. Okay, we're good. T testing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good, good. Is it good? You can hear me well? Bravo. All right. Thank you for coming through all the rain to be here uh, this afternoon. We've been talking probably about 10 years now about the problems that exist in the art materials industry out there. Uh, and in the last couple of years, I've been talking to Anna, and we decided that we should have a series of discussions about what is happening in the art materials uh, industry. So uh, uh, this afternoon, uh, I I'm going to sort of frame the problem and some of the issues. And then I have two fabulous uh, panelists that are going to share their observations from the inside of the industry. I have John Cogley, who is the owner and the president of the Daniel Smith Paint Company from Seattle, Washington. And I have Giuseppe Prezioso, who is the product manager of the famous Fabriano Paper Company, right here in Fabriano, a paper we all know and love. You know, from the beginning of time, there have always been changes in industry. And the art materials industry is no different. There have always been small changes that have been going on. And most of these are driven by business reasons. And they're not bad. The problem is, when the changes in the business of creating art materials affects the quality of the materials, then it's a problem. It's a problem for you, the artist, even if you're a hobbyist. You want some consistency in the materials you use. And for those of us that are professional painters, it affects our ability to make a living if the quality of the materials are not maintained. And I'm quite surprised as I travel around the world and I talk to artists and I say, what paper do you use? Oh, I use this paper. I said, what do you know about this paper? Oh, Sam used the paper and he told me it was good paper. So I'm using this paper. That's not really smart. You should know more about the materials that you are using and, and, and we're going to talk in some detail today about some of the most famous art materials in the last two or three hundred years who now have significantly decreased the quality of their products. But none of you seem to recognize that. You're saying, oh, I'm having some problems with this, with this paint. When I squeeze it, there's very little pigment in here. But you never question why? You go back and you buy another tube for a lot of money, and it has less pigment in it. So we're going to talk about what's causing some of that. And, 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 and I must admit, finding information about art materials today is not easy, because it's a very, very small industry, and the press that covers the art industry needs the advertising 
for the art product. So it's very difficult for the magazines and the, and the online blogs and things like that to say negative things about art materials. And so we decided that in the, in the context of Fabriano and Aquarela, that we should just step out and tell it like it really is. And so that, this is the first of what we think will be a series of, uh, of, of talks about art materials. And, you know, now we are in the years after the Second World War, after the Korean War, and after these big wars, people came back to their homes and there were not jobs. So they created new businesses. And some of these new businesses were in the art materials area. So now these people are becoming older in their life and they want to retire. And so now they want to sell their company to somebody else. That's just normal. That's just business. But when they sell their company to somebody who just wants to raise the price, lower the quality, and make a lot of money in between, we've got a problem as a group. And we need to stand up and say, we don't like what you're doing, you know? There are plenty of quality materials out there, but you can't continue to use that paper because it's been a fabulous paper for 300 years if it's no longer a fabulous paper. And we'll talk about some details. So today, we're going to talk very, very frankly about the market, and we're going to talk, tell you about some of the things that are happening in some of these big companies. As I say, we're at a time in history where a lot is happening. There's a lot of what we call churn in the industry. Things are changing. People are buying art materials to have more materials so they have a bigger share of the market. That's not a bad thing. Princeton Brushes is a very good example. The man that created Princeton Brushes in Princeton, New Jersey, has created a very, very good mid-level quality brush. It's a fabulous brush for, for students and universities. It's not the kind of brush that I would use as a professional painter, but it's a very good mid-level brush. And now he's as old as I am, and he would like to retire. So he has sold his company to Fila. When I say Fila, everybody thinks of shoes, yes? No, it's a different company. It's an Italian company that's a big, big company, and they're in lots and lots of businesses. But in the last five or six years, they've bought more than a dozen art material companies. And so we're waiting to see whether they will maintain the quality of those art materials co company, or did they buy them just to make an increased profit? We'll see. And we have family-owned businesses that have been in the business for hundreds of years. Fabriano is a great example of this, where over the two or three hundred years, there have been many owners of a few owners, a few owners. But now, last year, they were sold. And uh, the, the chairman of, of Fabriano is now on the board of the new company. And so there's every hope, and, and, and Giuseppe will talk about this, I'm sure, in a few minutes. There's every indication that the Fabriano paper is going to continue to be one of the best products in, in the world. Another reason why all these are changing, as I mentioned earlier, what we call mergers and acquisitions. It's the way small companies get bigger. They buy their competitors, and they buy startup companies, and they buy com companies that have been in the business a very long time. Fabriano is, again, one of those examples. And again, all these changes in business are not necessarily bad. It's when it impacts the quality of the product. That, and that's the issue. So let me, let me just tell you what I think personally 
are some of the worst things that are happening in, uh, in business today. And I'll show you also how fast things are happening. I made this slide about four days ago before I left the United States. Arsh paper. We all know Arsh paper. When I started painting 15 years ago, Arsh was the war horse of quality. You couldn't, you could no, do nothing but a fabulous painting on Arsh paper because it was so rugged. It was so well made. Its, its, its sizing was wonderful. Its surface sizing was fabulous. But then it got sold. And it was sold five times in seven years. And each time, the quality was lower. And so, just two years ago, they were bought by Colart. And there was no indication that Colart was going to raise the quality of the paper. They just spent a lot of advertising to sell more of the 300-year-old famous paper, and they raised the price. Last week, they were bought by Fila. So is Fila going to raise the quality to back when we used to like Arsh paper? How many of you have had a problem with Arsh paper in the last few years? Yeah. Well, many of you. Do you, you ever think that there's a root cause for this? It wasn't just that one sheet of paper. It was the all of the product of that. Windsor Newton in England and the United States is probably the most famous art material supplier in the history of art. But again, they have been bought and sold many times in the last seven years. And one day I went to the store and I bought a tube of cerulean blue, Windsor Newton. I'd been painting with nothing for five years but fabulous Windsor Newton paint. I took off the end of the tube and I squeezed it out and the only thing that came out of the tube was ox gall. There was a little bit of pigment way at the bottom of the tube. So I went and bought another tube thinking this was just an odd mistake. The second tube was worse. So then I went searching for another paint and I was searching for another paper. Now, I'm pleased to report on the side. In the meantime, I found Daniel Smith uh, paints and I found Fabriano paper, but that's my personal history. So I, I think that, uh, I mean, for instance, Wins Windsor Newton. Windsor Newton had just b built the finest paint milling plant in the world in France. And so what did its owner do? It closed the plant and move most of that production to China because it was so much cheaper. You can buy a tube of Windsor Newton paint, or paint in China for one dollar. It costs 15 to 20 dollars in the United States. Where's the quality? So, and, 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 and nobody's questioning this. I don't hear anybody talking about it. And I'd be, I'd be pleased to talk to the Windsor Newton people and, 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 the, and, the, uh, and the Arsh people because I think what they're doing is very, very bad for all of us. And nobody knows, quite frankly, why some of these companies, why is Fila buying all of these art material uh, products? That's not their main business. And the other thing that's happening out there is that management consulting firms in Sweden are buying art material companies. Companies whose primary business is building bridges, roads, dams, and harbors. What are they doing buying art material companies? It's less than one half of a percent of their total earnings. Or do they really care about you and me? I'm not thinking so. So I think what we need is more open discussion about this and more sharing of this kind of information. If you have pro a problem with an art product, ask your neighbors, ask your friends, ask the leaders in, in, in the watercolor world, is this a personal problem that I'm having or is this a bigger issue 
in the entire industry. And I think if we start this kind of a dialogue, we'll learn a lot about what is happening in the art materials uh, industry. And I'm hoping that over the next several years, we will create this kind of platform for dialogue within the Fabriano community worldwide, both through the country leaders and through continental leaders and through the leadership of Anna and her fabulous team here in Fabriano. So I'd like to, to pass the baton now to, uh, to our guest panelists, and I'd like for both John and Giuseppe to give us their view because they have obviously a slightly different view because they are in the business of creating quality art materials. And so I've asked them to come and, and be perfectly frank with all of us. What does it look like from their side? And then I'm gonna ask them a few questions and then we will open up the dialogue for you to ask all of us questions. John, would you like to start off? So my name is John Coggan, I'm the owner of Daniel Smith. Um, I think it's a wonderful time for you as artists to be artists. The amount of information that's available on the internet uh, that companies worldwide provide if you want to read it um, is huge. Owning my, uh, a company myself, uh, for every product I make, I provide a SDS, which is a safety data sheet that will tell you the pigment that's in the product um, it'll tell you really much everything that's in the product. Um, on our site, we tell you how the product behaves. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be an artist. The pigments that are available are probably the best pigments that have ever been made available. Um, I think the one, the one thing I always think about in doing presentations around the world, I, I get questions, well, why should I care? The student grade works as well for me as the professional grade. And I thought about that for, for quite some time and, and my reply now is, at the end of the day, whatever paper you use, whatever paint you use, and whatever brush you use, nobody's going to know. What they will know is your signature on the bottom of that painting. So in 10 years, when it starts to fade, or it doesn't, the paper starts to age, it's gonna be your name on the paper, not my name. So it costs, a lot, it costs quite a bit of money to be able to use the best pigment, to make the best paint. Um, as a manufacturer, I have outside laboratories um, that have to test for, uh, whether for toxicology. If a paper, if a paint is being made in a, in a back room, they're not going to do that. So to guarantee that the product meets uh, worldwide standards is not without cost. You can always buy something cheap, and that is always your right to do so. But I think the thing to always remember, at the end of the day, five years, 10 years, 20 years, when you're making a name for yourself, it's only your name on that painting. <clears throat> Thank you, John. I'm Giuseppe Prezioso, I'm not the owner of Fabriano, so I'm just <laughs> an employee of the company. And so what, my testimony here is just to, to make clear that the commitment of the company, even though uh, the company changed ownership uh, many times in the last few years, so until the end of the last century was part of the government, so was owned by the state and moved the ownership in 2002 to Federigoni Group, is another group, uh, Italian group producing paper. And nowadays, since one year exactly, is part now of uh, Bain Capital. So a private equity fund, so um, American uh, private equity fund, but the management is all Italian. So during all these changes, and now this, that's the, the major change, because changing from the state uh, to another uh, paper mill has not been so, so hard from the production point of view for the mentality because it was always the same philosophy. So to make the paper in the best possible way and so to keep the quality always uh, very high level. Today the challenge 
is to keep firm this point in order to maintain, to keep um, the quality and the reputation of the paper always at the same level. And that's our strength and our effort to make it clear to the new ownership. On the other side, to keep uh, always the same quality, the consistency of the, the quality of the paper, sometimes it is not just uh, on our shoulder, on our side, because the chemicals that are used in uh, producing paper, sometimes they change. They change in, due to the fact that the regulations are changing. If you know the REH, uh, so the rich list of chemicals that can be used or not used, sometimes that can affect uh, the quality of the paper. The chemicals in the paper are not so strong as in the paint industry because we don't have to, to provide a safety data sheet for paper, but the chemicals that we use into the paper sometimes uh, make some changes that the providers don't tell us because these changes are very small. The name of the product uh, is always the same. We see the different reaction uh, of the paper if we make a comparison with the previous uh, production batches. So our effort is to keep for our professional uh, grades always uh, a very high standard. And sometimes it's not possible because the machines where we produce this kind of papers are very old machines with not all the equipment to, to track uh, the quality on every single sheet. And we know that it's very hard because that's the, the hardest thing to make clear to to some uh, managers that the paper used in fine arts are used sheet by sheet. It's not like printing papers where you put the paper into the press and it's printed. Every sheet is scrutinized, it's under scrutiny uh, every day because artists are expecting always the best reactions and always the same quality. And that's the, the most important thing that we have to, to pass to the new management and to ourselves in order to have always in mind that the quality is very important in this field. Because when you paint something that is a, a masterpiece, that has to last over the years. And if you're not satisfied with the paper, with our product, we are not satisfied because that's, that means that we are uh, doing something wrong. And we see some changes uh, in when we make the, our own tests in, in the lab with the paper, we see different reaction if we use different paints, Winter & Newton, uh, Talents, or other brands. So sometimes for us, it, that's puzzling because we don't know whether it's the paper not working well or it's the paints re reacting in a different way with the paper. So that's something that for us sometimes is a problem. So uh, we try always to keep a balance between uh, some ex extremes in the production in order to have a paper behaving in the best possible way for every technique with every color. So that's the, the biggest challenge that we're facing now. Thanks, Giuseppe. Uh, I, I want to ask a few questions. And, and, and the first question I would ask both of you, uh, we, we've seen a lot of changes in the last six or seven years. Is that more than is normal? Than, both of you have been in the business 30 years, so you've seen a lot of history of this. Is there more change going on today than you've seen in the past? You mean from, in, from ownership or? And, and, and affecting the quality of the product. My experience, I can just talk about so for Fabriano. And we try always to, to have a very close eye on, on on the quality, uh, even though sometimes we can make some errors. What I can see now in the market, there is a, a consolidation. So Fila now is on the way to buy everything in the art industry, creating a, a very big group focalized in uh, fine arts. Previously, it was more dedicated to school. In the last few years, has invested a lot after being uh, quoted and listed in the Milan Stock Exchange. So after uh, it went uh, public, so made a lot of investments in order to grow in this market. And the fastest way to grow in a market is to buy market shares. So buying new companies or other companies in the same market 
we have built up, built up a very huge market share in papers. Now, Harsh has come back to Fila, and Fila has cancelled on. So they, are, they have rebuilt the, the old, let's say, group when Canson was part of Arjo Wiggins and when Canson and Arch papers were sold and distributed under the same uh, organization. And now I think FILA is the strongest and the biggest one. Collard has made uh, something uh, different, let's say. So tried to invest in the paper, distributing the Arch uh, papers, but probably it didn't work. So now they are more focalizing, I think, in pains, but that's something that I don't know very, very well. So what is happening now is, for Fabriano as well, there's been a consolidation because Fedrigoni is in, was in the, is in the same field, so in the paper market. And so because that's uh, something happening with the globalization. So if you want to stay in this kind of market, you have to be strong, uh, strong not only from a financial point of view, uh, from a production point of view, but mostly by a financial point of view. So it's very important to have a critical mass in order to be present and to resist in this market. That's not uh, anymore your global, your national market. It's a global market. Great. John? Uh, I see a couple things. There's, um, there's always been big players, whether it was Dale or Rowney, who had all types of different products, brushes, all the various mediums, or Windsor Newton and now Fila. Um, it's a com it, it has become a commodity market, uh, everything based upon price. In the US, and I don't know about here in, in Europe, but in the US, uh, people that started stores are now of the age of 60, 65 years old, and they're selling their stores, and there's nobody coming back in to have those stores. They're going away. Um, that's given a huge rise to the internet um, in America, uh, people buy from Jackson's, which is located in London. Um, so it's a, it's a worldwide market to be able to get your product. You can get it from anyone, anywhere, anytime. There's also, um, again, because it's commodity driven and there's uh, people that want to uh, sell a product, uh, there's papers coming out of different parts of the world that are untested. Um, there's different paints that are coming out of uh, the different parts of the world where the pigment is um, not tested, so it can have heavy metals, etc. So the, the industry is changing quite a bit. It certainly is moving toward a mass of very large ownership that have a large number of brands that don't necessarily care about the brands. Um, they care about how they can maximize their, their profits. Um, probably more difficult than it ever has been to be a smaller company uh, that, that, that sells worldwide. Um, it's, it's a real fight. Thanks, John. I, I, I think that boy really sets the picture out there. Now, but I, I, wanna be, I, I, I don't want to be steamroller over the... And, and make everybody go out of here that said, Lauren McCracken said, everything in the art material business is going bad and maybe we should all move to acrylics. That would be the last thing I want anybody to do. I, you know, I'm a watercolor at, in my heart and my soul. And, and so in, in, in the United States, uh, we, you know, we have 40 uh, fabulous artists that are represented here in Fabriano, and over the last several years, we've had several others. So we, we've had 53 artists that have been uh, involved here in Fabriano, and we meet twice a year as a group to talk about these kinds of issues. So with the last time we met, we had a really interesting discussion about who can you trust? And so let me give you a list of, of, of some of the companies that we think that are very active out there today that have been able to maintain a very, very high quality of, of, of product. And, and, and I'm typically, I, you know, I've, I've done them in, as brushes, paint, and, and, uh, and, uh, and paper. Uh, brushes that are just fabulous out there 
You know, the Raphael, that's a really fabulous brush. The Easy Bay just sets a high, high standard. Da Vinci from uh, Nuremberg is just a, a, a wonderful, wonderful. And of course, I have to admit it's my favorite, is the Escotas, you know. But what's, what's common about all of those people? They're a relatively small company that if they didn't have quality product, they would have no presence out there. And so they are not the Fila's of the world. They're not the coal arts of the world. They're not the giant manufacturing facilities that need to sell millions and millions and millions of brushes every month. And so they fall into a pretty unique niche out there. Uh, and, and they're small craftsmen out there. Uh, you know, David Jackson, uh, known as the brush man in England, still produces a fabulous, fabulous product. But what is also common about all of these products? They're expensive, right? You know, they're not what the student's going to be able to afford out there. So it, sort of the message to you as fine artist is that as you get better, buy better products because that will mean that your product improves, your quality of your painting improves, and we support those people that support you. In paint, Daniel Smith, obviously. Mm -hmm. Sennelier, fabulous product. Holbein, terrific product. Schmicke, terrific product. Uh, and, and, it, and, and, you know, M. Graham has been one of those fabulous uh, watercolors out there. Mr. Graham sold the company last year. So what does that mean for you and me as an artist? Not to stop buying M. Graham, but be cautious about buying M. Graham. And be sure that the product that you buy today was the same product you bought six months ago. And if it isn't, let the new owner know, and if they're not listening to you, go find another brand. And, uh, the, and, and one of the problems I'll point out, it, in these big conglomerates out there, so if you want to complain about uh, arse paper, to whom do you talk? How many days would it take for you to find somebody in Fila that would be interested in talking to you, a single artist, and when you end up talking to them, will they listen? I mean, one of the great things about these two companies is that if you have a problem with a tube of Daniel Smith paint, John wants to hear about it because he has scientists on staff, and if you have a problem, he'll let you talk to one of those scientists I'm not overselling here, I don't think, because I, I, I've done it myself. And they will ask you questions, and you may find out you're just using the product improperly. It's nothing to do with the quality of the paint. Maybe you're not as smart as you thought you are, but he can show you a few things that all of a sudden makes it magic again. Giuseppe and I met on the internet 10 years ago, because I, I, just, I just used my first uh, piece of, uh, of Fabriano paper. I loved it, but it was so different than the arse that I'd been using 10 years previously. I wanted to find out, was I using the product properly? So I went on the internet and found Giuseppe's email and I wrote him. And 10 days later, he wrote me back a very nice long email and told, him that I, told me that I was both right and wrong. I was using the paper properly most of the time, but for instance, one of the d discussions we had was, was I removing the shipping sizing from the paper? How many of you know that single sheet watercolor paper has a shipping sizing on it? I don't see any hands. Most people don't know. And that yes, Giuseppe said, you, in order to use the paper the way it is intended to be used, you need to lightly remove the shipping sizing. I'm sure he will admit, 
and that there are plenty of people in the world that paint on Fabriano paper without removing the shipping sizing and usually don't know the difference, right? I mean, we've had this discussion a few times over the years. And, and some of my fellow painters who use Fabriano paper and love it don't realize. But what they don't realize that they have to work harder to get into the fibers of the paper because they have not removed the shipping sizing. Very easy to remove. Just da dash it in water for 10 seconds because it's very soluble. You just don't want to get enough water to get into the body sizing uh, of the paper. But if you'll use it properly, it's even more spectacular than you thought it was. So looking out to the future, what can we expect? And what do we need to do about it? Number one is to just be aware that all these changes are happening. Because when I talk to my fellow watercolorists around the world, I don't hear a lot of people discussing this. When I bring up the subject, everybody says, oh, yes, I'm having problems with that paper. I didn't realize there was a fundamental issue. These issues are fundamental. You know, I used to be in the architecture marketing business, and one of the things I learned is you can't believe everything everybody says. You know, don't be buffaloed by the marketing. You look at some of the, these old line companies that have been bought by these big corporations, and you read their advertising, and they're going to say, we have been the standard in the industry for 350 years, so continue to buy our product. Are they going to tell you it's a lesser quality product? Of course they're not. But ask questions. Ask questions of yourself. You know, is that last piece of paper of Arsh, did I get the best results out of it of like I did 10 years ago? Probably not. Oh, I, you know, I, I, I love the products I use. I, I typically use Fabriano soft press paper. I use Daniel Smith paints, and I use Escoda brushes. I make no qualms about it. In my view, for the way I paint personally, now I'm not suggesting that this is what you should use, but for the way that I personally paint, for my degree of realism, this is the perfect combination for me. I'm not suggesting it's the personal perfect combination for each of you. You need to find that perfect combination that fits the personality of your art. But I never stop testing new products. When, and there are a lot of new products on the market every day. So when somebody calls me and says, I have a new watercolor, I'd like to send you a few tubes so you can uh, test it. Sure, I'll do that. What I've found is none of them are as good as Daniel Smith. But I'll continue to search. And so I encourage you to do that. But the thing that I don't see much out there I still see people that say, I've used Windsor Newton for 15 years, I've used arch paper for the, for the last 10 years, and I'm not going to change. I think that's a problem. All right, let's open up for some questions out there. Christine? Yes, I have a question for you. Should I stand up? Sure. Have you used uh, Fabriano for 20 years? Mm -hmm. And when I started, I was using Fabriano Uno. I do multiple washes, gradient backgrounds on my paintings. <coughs> paintings. Uh, you, do, you stop making Uno. No, I can just buy artistical. It reacts a little different than the Uno. I wonder, do you have anything comparable to Uno now, or is it just fine? So, thank you for your question. So. Uh, the change happened, if I remember well, because I've, I was in Fabriano that period. So we had a consultant that was trying to, to, <laughs> to make a new marketing for us, so in order to invest just in one brand, Artistico, and to get rid of Fabriano Uno that was sold only in the US. Was, 
uh, a product made on purpose for the US market because the Artistico is a little bit yellowish, so it's more uh, uh, close to the European standard. In the US, what uh, the, our distributor was saying that people were looking for a water paper for watercolor. So when we made the switch, so the change, so it's strange, something that I, will, I said before, so the paper is exactly the same. So the composition, the surface treatment, but probably due to the fact that in the US, Artistico was perceived a step below compared to Fabriano, Fabriano Uno, so that change has made things that the quality uh, was lowered at, at the Artistico level, but I can swear that the quality in the paper is actually the same. So the change has been made only to invest in one brand, Artistico, and to, to divide uh, Artistico in traditional white and extra white. So that's the only change, but the, the paper has remained exactly the same. And if you look at the, the surface grain, so the soft press is only present in Artistico extra white because it was the grain of Fabriano Uno. So but has been, that has been an error. So if I was now at that time, I didn't make the change, but I was, I was young. I'm still young, but <laughs> I was younger at the moment. I didn't have the capacity to, to contrast this decision because the consultant was uh, quite important. So his word was more important than mine and I was fresh in the company. So just with one year and two years of experience. So, but our distributor, uh, Sour Fair, was fighting to keep Fabriano Uno. Uh, he was right. We, we can say it after, but the quality is the same. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have been using Fabriano 600 watergraphs for a couple of years now, and I'm noticing change between the single sheet and the big 100 mm -hmm. uh, centimeters to. So is there a difference? Uh, there, there are no watermarks on the. Yes, no, the paper is actually the same. So what can change is the production batch. Uh, from time to time, you can see, unfortunately, some differences because in the machine production, uh, we try to keep, to be consistent with the quality, but they are very artisanal um, machines. So you have to rely on, on the workers on the machine because there are no automatic controls. That's the, the, the issue. But the paper, even though the, the, the bigger size is without the watermark, it's exactly the same quality, the same composition. But you can see some differences because from one production batch to the other, there could be some differences happening because of something different during production. That's, that's a problem that we try always to, to fix, but it's not easy. Questions? Observations? Alfonso. I have a big concern in general about how the products are sold, how the products are used, and how the information is provided by different manufacturers about the, the product itself. And the cost is not really the point. It's actually, I believe, is the marketing strategy by some products, you know, over the past orders. I know there was, for example, that would take one example that being very horrible and not so very commendable, then it was you know, joining an incredible kind of continuous educational project. I, I can't believe that somebody would go with this town of the world, traveling about the world, trying to communicate, <laughs> not selling it to, selling the product how it's made and talking about it. I haven't heard Sanelia from that. I haven't heard Vincent Newton doing that. I see beautiful videos of all these products. They're just fantastic. I think they will speak actually using their page, which is not quite the same. And at the same time, I wonder, say, well, if we have this kind of forms, I would like just to actually propose, or maybe perhaps think about it, that we should have these other companies on the same basis give us the, the knowledge that they have, how they produce for other materials. I also have another concern 
which is uh, the, the people who use these materials. There's one branch here, and another which is really strong here. Yeah. The students do not know, let's put it very basically. They will report that or check or whatever, you never think in the alphabet, what you call all materials, and they go and with the instructions. Not all the instructors have knowledge about the materials that can be used. Now, it's a deficiency perhaps. The professional artist, he, the, or he or she, has got a really strong research because they want to keep a good product. And right. as John said, lasting quality yeah. in the materials. The instructors in many cases do not care for that. They care more about the publicity, the, the exposure, and the travel around the world you know, doing their, their workshops. You know, and one thing I, I this is not a comment that I have to John, is about the production of one line of work of materials for the college of one artist. For example, I would say the tone of phrase, you know, that these artists use or these other artists use as well. I, I think we are getting a little bit more uh, overwhelmed by the information that we have by different sources. You know what? The competition is not simple anymore because you have 25 dollars, 75 dollars, 120 dollars for different brands, and actually it's hard to compare one to other. And I, I, I think that just the market is oversaturating names, colors, and actually people get confused. The students actually they, they go with the instructor and tell them. The instructor tells this color, he thought it was good, this piece oh, I will buy two. I know a student that have a collection of every brand, brushes, paper. And they will think, oh, the best paper is with the instructor. So it's not a simple question and no simple answers. All what I'm saying expressing my concerns. How can we and I think in this kind of forums in, in Fabiana, I think we one strain that we can have in this kind of uh, opportunity that we have in Europe to, uh, to discuss this situation more, more, more profound, not yes. superficially, but more really to the fact. Yeah. How can we really use the product? How can we really be educational to everyone? And actually yeah. create a real discipline, you know, in, in the, the way we perceive sure. all the smart. I just spoke yeah. about this time, but I think. No, I, I, I'll find, I, 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 I want to applaud your comment. No, you, that, that's enough, Alfonso. <laughs> no, no, come on. You have one more. <laughs> Is this an issue that you're interested in? Yes? No? Or, or are we just wasting your time? No. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that... And, and what I'm hoping, and, and Anna, I've been talking about this for a couple of years. What we're hoping is that this kind of forum, we will open up to the product manufacturers to come and talk to us about the, the, the things that they're changing and, and the changes in their business and how they're marketing and tell us the technical. Uh, and as I said, I, I was an architect for 50 years, and in the architecture business, there are a lot of standards, there are a lot of tests that products have to go through that are not present in the, uh, in the fine art materials. So I think we just have to ask a lot more questions out there and have forums like this uh, to discuss these things openly and, and frankly. I'm, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Winger Newton and, uh, and Arsh have probably put out a contract on me this afternoon and I have to spend the rest of several days looking behind my back. But if we don't talk openly and frankly about this, I, I think that the, the industry will suffer and we will suffer as artists uh, out there. Are there any more questions, any more comments that you'd like to join us with? No? Thank you for coming. Tell everybody that you came and tell them everybody that you actually learned a little bit. Thank you very much. Oh, excuse me, one quick. Is that right? All right. Okay. Good. <laughs>